Since you're in the house tonight, could you do me a favor and just lift your hands and let's give God just a little bit of worship. I want to set ourselves up right now. God said, worship me right now. Open your mouth and worship me right now like you know what's is ready to happen. That you are not getting ready to leave here the way that you came. I can't hear nobody. I need somebody that knows that I'm not here just because it's the thing to do. I did not come here to waste my time. I did not come here because everybody else said it's a revival. But I came to get something from the Lord. And the Lord knows what I need. And, and, and I want to stand in his face. I want to move the angels out of the way so I can stand face to face with my Lord. Come on and worship him and tell him how good he is. Have you told him how good he is today? Have you told him that, Lord, you're the best? Lord, you're better than the best. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. I know he wants me to keep on and go on to the next phase. Uh, but somebody right now, God is touching right now. Somebody getting delivered right now. The weight is getting lifted off of somebody right now. The confusion is being removed off of somebody right now. Jesus, Jesus. 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 Do me a favor. I hope look at your neighbor. Say, I hope, I hope, I hope you's a praiser. Tell him, say, I hope that you's a praiser. Tell him, say, I hope you just not sit next to me because it was an open seat. But if you in this area right here, we getting ready to give God some praise. We getting ready to give God some glory. Because I came to be revived. I came to be set free. I came for a renewal. I came, I came, I came. I came, I came, I came. I've been in a struggle. I've been in the struggle. And God said the struggle is only a sign that you belong to him. The struggle is only a sign you belong to him. If you know that's your God, and you know that you're not going to leave here the way that you came, I want you to give him some glory right now. Like, I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to bless the Lord right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I'm going to move on, I'm going to move on. 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 But purpose in your mind, when I give God this next praise, when I give God this next praise, this next praise is for my victory. This next praise is for God to show up and show out. If you believe in praise the Lord right now, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Set yourself up for a miracle. Set yourself up for your breakthrough. Set yourself up right now. Set it, set it, set it, set it. Set it, set it, set it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you right now asking you, Lord Father God, to have your way on tonight. Have your way on tonight, God. Lord God, we know that there are things that we had before you, but God, we ask of you right now. So even if though that you have been here, God, give me the strength to, to, to just release anything that's distracting me from pulling down the thing that I need on tonight. God, I thank you right now. We thank you right now. We in this revival, God, we thank you right now. Why are we thanking him for every negative thing that made us pray? We thank you, God, for every negative thing that made us get in your face. God, we thank you right now for every mishap, every sickness, every heartache. Because, God, you have shown me that I can overcome everything that come my way. Lord, I thank you in advance. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. I thank you, Lord. As the songwriter said, there is none like you, God. There is none like you, God. Now, God, that you have been glorified, we ask you for a blessing. 
We ask you for a touch. We ask you for a fresh start. We ask you to revive us all tonight. For this time, Father God, anoint this service for us and anoint us for this service. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is here tonight, God, because they need to receive new power. Somebody is here tonight because they need to be reconnected with you. Somebody is here tonight because they need direction, God. Somebody is here because we need healing, God. Somebody is here because we need a touch from you, Lord. Somebody is here because, Lord, we need to be delivered, Lord. So we ask you right now to show up on tonight and meet the need in the name of Jesus. Turn us every which way but loose, and we give you the name, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen. How many of you know that the Lord is just good? Is there anybody in here that can look past your situation and say that the Lord is just good? In case you didn't know, goodness is his character. And our situation doesn't change his character. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Amen. Amen. I'm going to watch the time on tonight. But I promise you that God is getting ready to do something miraculous for somebody in here on tonight. So I want you all to just be in expectation. To be in expectation. There is a unique word that God said you need to hear on tonight. Amen. 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 We thank you, Bishop. We thank you, Bishop, <clears throat> for putting on this revival. God bless you. God bless your heart. God bless your willingness and to be able to listen. To be able to listen. You too, Pastor. God bless you for allowing us to go forth. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Come on, give the angel of this house a good God bless you. Amen. 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 His wife in her absence. Amen. To the most beautiful woman in this world, to me. To me, to me, to me, to the angel of my life. God bless you. Can you just say amen for Lady Pullen? Amen. 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 If y'all remember Dr. Jolie, I told her like he told his wife. I said, if you ever tried to leave me, I'm coming with you. Yeah, I told her that. I told her, you, I'll be at work, and she'd be in them, out there doing her thing. I said, don't worry. If somebody asks you for your number, give them mine. I know just what to say to them. I know just what to say to them. Lord, help us on tonight. God, help us on tonight. God, help us on tonight. Are y'all ready to be? God bless everybody in the house, all of the saints of God. God bless you. Amen. My mom and, um, my mom and dad is over there. From um, from my in-law from marriage, Amen. God bless them. God bless them coming it out to support the old man, Amen. I can hear him saying, "Preach, boy, preach." Here it is, the word of the Lord. Won't be before you long, but we're gonna let God have His way, Amen. Amen. How many are ready to receive a word from the Lord, Amen? Nudge your neighbor, say, "I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready." I'm ready, I'm ready, because when God get it, when God get us going, he's going to take us up there. He's going to take us up there. Now, this is the prayer. This is the prayer. This is the prayer. You pray that I get it off to you the way God gave it to me. Amen. Amen. Now, if you feel, I don't know what I'm talking about, don't talk about me. Just say, Lord, bless him. But if you feel you don't know what I'm talking about, then just say, Lord, bless me. Amen. And I believe that God is going to put us on one accord on tonight. On tonight, on tonight, on tonight. The book of 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's go into the word of the Lord. I'm so, I'm so excited for what God's getting ready to happen and what this word is going to do to some of us. To some of us. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Very familiar text. Very familiar text. Very familiar text. Amen. 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 I'm going to go start with verse 53. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable, 
and the mortal with immortality, being saying that it is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. I had no idea they was going to sing the song that death could not hold him down, me down. Here it is, verse 55, verse 55, and this is what he began to speak. See, this is what we have to do, saints of God. Sometimes you got to speak to the thing. Here it is, here it is, here it is. He says, where, O death, is your victory? See, you got to know Jesus to say something like that. He says, where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brethren and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know. I also want to read verses Isaiah 64, verse 8. It says these words. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the meeting, to the to the reading of His Word. Now, now, now. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are many, many scriptures in the Bible about about death, as well as victory, even as it relates to the term victory over death. But if you believe that God gave El to pull in a word for you on tonight. Can you just do me a favor and look at the person, somebody close to you, and say, neighbor, death has no more dominion over me. Amen. 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 See, some of y'all probably a little nervous, but if you know Jesus Christ, do me a favor, find you somebody across the room. Maybe you told somebody and say, neighbor, 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 look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Say, neighbor, I see you. I got my eye on you. I got my eye on you. I got my eye on you. Say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. But as for me, death has no more dominion over me. Clap your hands and receive the word of the Lord this evening. Amen, 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 amen. Now, if you in here under the listening to the ears, I want you to know right now, you see, many of us in here, God wants to give us a spiritual awakening. And God wants to give us that awakening. But the truth of the matter is, there are some things that we are going to have to get rid of. And there are some things we are going to have to not only let go of, because, see, we satisfy with getting rid of them, and we satisfy with letting go of them, and we never get to the place where I need to get the victory victory over it. You see, God not only wants us to get over some things, but he wants to give us the victory over some things. But living this life, living this life today, we are surrounded by death every day. Every day and nearly all day. Hello, somebody. That chicken that you ate. Well, I like chicken, so that chicken that I ate, that tasted so good, that fried chicken, <clears throat> is a result of death. That fish you ate, that you cooked in that fish fry, is a result of death. That steak you ate so lustrously, that prime rib that you dipped in that our juice, is a result of death. Even the plants is a result of death. And, 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 and it ain't just what we eat because that leather that you got in your closet at home, that you wear when you be styling and profiling, looking nice, can't nobody tell you nothing, is a result of death. Hello, somebody. That alligator shoes that, that, that shine and bling and make you put a little strut to your walk and your dip and your slip and your, you know, your stride and your glide and your roll and your stroll and how you're walking like you really think you're somebody is a result of death. Mm, it was good for you, but it wasn't so good for the little alligator that had it before you got a hold to it. 
that mink in your closet mm, that you put on when you shrug your shoulders trying to look so good is a result of death. But we got to be careful because death is an enemy to God. You see, death is the enemy to God because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Another thing you need to know about death is that where there is death, there is no expectation. That's why you cannot go to the gravesite expecting much. It doesn't matter how good my friend played basketball. I cannot go to the court with him with a ball expecting to play a game of one-on-one. You can, it doesn't matter how good so-and-so can cook. You don't go to the gravesite with some pots and pans expecting to bake a cake because there is no expectation in the grave. There is no expectation in death. And if you did go to the grave expecting much, you won't be long before somebody came and got you, took you where you could get some help. But, 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 we're not just talking physical death in here because that's not your problem. That's not our problem or you wouldn't be sitting right here listening to me right now. <clears throat> but the death I'm talking about that God wants to give us the victory over is dealing with the dead issues and dead situations that come and take part in our lives every single day. Many times dead issues keep us awake. They keep us from being our further and keep us from doing what God wants us to do. How do you know it's a dead issue? How do you know I'm dealing with a dead situation? Because there is no life life and there is no benefit in it anything that has no life and no benefit in it is a dead situation and the enemy comes to trick us that he we cannot see we cannot see and understand that we deal with dead situations over and over again but I believe tonight is your night that God is going to expose some dead situations God is going to expose some dead issues and not only is he going to expose them he's going to give us the victory over all these issues that we deal with over and over with no benefit in it and no life in it. Mm. Mm. Victory. Victory, victory, victory. I'm talking about situation after situation. No benefit in it. These are considered dead situations. And God said you have to get the victory over them tonight. Because after tonight, God said, if you give them to me, if you give me your dead issues, if you give me your dead situation, I'm going to, if you give me the glory on tonight, then those situations will not waste your time anymore. Those situations won't have you up at night anymore. They won't be in your mindset, as Dr. Hardy would say, without paying rent anymore. They won't keep you up at night anymore. You won't be crying and wondering about it anymore because God is going to give us the victory on tonight and I don't know about you but I'm ready for God to do some serious delivering in my life and get me free from dead situations and get me free from dead issues because I want to be free So many times we deal with things. We carry weight that has no benefit. We carry weight that has no life in it. And the Spirit of God told me to tell somebody right now. He said, if you give me glory, tonight is your night to get free. If you give me glory, I can't hit nobody. He said, tonight is your night to get free from dead issues, from dead conversations, from dead people, from dead weight. Tonight is your night to get free. And God said, I am in the house to deliver on tonight. He said to deliver. And he says, he says, you really want a spiritual awakening? God said, you really want a spiritual awakening? I'm going to awaken your eyes. And what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to awaken your eyes so that every time the enemy comes in your life and gives you a dead situation, you're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to identify it. Why? Because God said, when you get this spiritual awakening, you're going to be able to see things that you never seen before. You're going to be able to discern things that you never discerned before. And people ain't going to understand 
why I don't bother them right now. Why they used to get mad about it. They used to get in the conversation. But you're going to realize that ain't who I am anymore. I got delivered from those things. And what used to get me upset don't even faze me anymore. What used to bother me don't even faze me anymore. I ain't getting in those conversations. I don't need a call that bad. I don't need to go to dinner that bad. I don't need no company that bad. If you got to do all of that, then you stay over there and I'll just stay right here. Dead issues. Dead situations. We can't even praise God the way we want to praise him because the weight is so heavy. We don't even want to fellowship with saints because the weight is so heavy. God said, I'm going to open up your eyes. Is there anybody in here who need to see? Is there anybody in here who need to see? Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I got to see. I got to be able to see her because I got kids running around. I got to see her. I got family that needs direction. I got to see her. I got loved ones that need saved. I've got to see her. I got a family to support. I've got to see her. I got a city that needs my prayers. I've got to see her. And I'm going to keep looking for God to move until the Holy Ghost run wild all up in my house to the Holy Ghost run wild all up in my church. Why? Because I've got to see. Spirit of God say, I've got to see. I've got to see. People ain't living right. I've got to see. They doing wrong. She doing wrong. He doing wrong. Lolly, Dolly, everybody doing wrong. And I need somebody here to just lift your hands and wave your hands and say, Lord, show me. Awaken me to see. I ain't got time to fall into dead issues. I ain't got time to fall into dead situations. I need to release the ones I got right now. So I don't need no extra weight weighing me down. Here it is. Here it is. Let's go to the Bible. You see, biblically, biblically, a spiritual awakening is not an awakening from spiritual sleep, but it's a resurrection from spiritual death. All of us are born in sin as spiritually dead. Ephesians 2 and 1 states that before we knew Christ, we were dead in transgressions and sin. And because of the sin of Adam, we were put in a place where we were disconnected from God. And it says in Romans, we cannot experience, we cannot understand, we cannot relate to a holy God, to a perfect God in that state. Or we can't even enter into his kingdom. In other words, you got to be saved. You got to know him. You got to know him. So that lets us know that a spiritual awakening is really necessary. You see, in Corinthians 4 and 4 says this. Oh, oh my God. Here it is. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays from the glory of Jesus Christ. They cannot even see the light. And we must be, as John said, we must be spiritually awakening, as Jesus put it, born again. And the truth be told that the enemy has not just blinded the minds and the eyes of unbelievers. He has blinded the minds and the eyes of believers because we can't even see, we can't even discern what is of the Holy Spirit and what is not of the Holy Spirit. You got to be careful just because somebody has a gift. That don't mean it's the Holy Spirit. Just because they in the church, they don't mean it's the Holy Spirit. That's why when I come into the house of God, you may be looking for, we want God to show up. We want the Holy Spirit to show up. I know you was looking for somebody to come in here and speak in tongues, but can I tell you something? Tongues ain't the first thing you get when you get the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, tongues ain't even charged to the believers. It's charged to the unbelievers. But if you want to know what is charged to the believers, you got to look at Acts chapter 8 when it says, after the Holy Ghost has come upon them, you shall receive power. When the enemy 
has your mind. He has everything else. That's why we come to church agitated. That's why we come here and don't feel like nobody to bother us. And the enemy trick us and make us think it's okay. And tells us, well, since I made it into the house of God, I already got my victory. But the devil in the lie, since you in the house of God, you might as well act like a child of God and give God some glory and begin a fellowship. Why should you do that? Because you may not feel like it. But when you see the glory of God on somebody else, you may say, if they can praise him with what they going through, why am I sitting here like I'm the frozen chosen and a bump on a log? I think I better open my mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. You see, here it is, here it is. I got a few more points. We're going to be done. Another reason we fall into dead situations is because when God gives you something, you tell it to the wrong person. You tell it to the person that has no faith. Why are you telling people the vision of God that God has for your life to somebody else who has no faith? They can't even tell you. Then they begin to talk you down out of what God has talking to you because they want your faith to be down there with their faith. And more importantly, more importantly, the reason why we fall into dead situations because we tell them to people who ain't going where we going, who don't want to go where we going, who don't believe how we believe, and we expect them to understand what God is telling us. The devil is a liar. God says he's going to deliver us from who we talk to. That's why you got to pray, Lord, ordain my circle. Ordain my circle. Get these folks out of here that don't do me good. Ordain my circle. See, we don't want God to come in the midst because God come, he start changing things. He start removing people. You been looked at your phone from the top. You just scroll down to the bottom. You can find nobody to call. Why? Because God has given you a new eyesight to what he's doing in your life. Here it is, here it is. Here it is, here it is. Here it is. The reason why I give God the glory is because from this day forth, God is going to expose every person that speaks depth to his vision. He's going to expose every person that speaks down on his vision. If you don't like where God is taking me, just keep your mouth shut. If you don't like where God is taking Highland, just keep your mouth shut. Touch not my anointed and do my servant. Uh-huh. Somebody say, get over that dead situation. Look at somebody say, no more dead situations. No more dead issues. If it ain't got life in it, if it ain't got benefit in it, then it ain't got me in it. I got to tell you something about Jesus and death. I got to tell you something about Jesus and death. This is why I pray this revival. God also refills us with the Holy Ghost. Because here it is. Here it is. I'm not going to be too much longer. Here it is. When you're dealing with dead issues and dealing with dead situations, understand the issues is within yourself. The situation is within other people. We often ask Jesus to touch our dilemma, to touch our situation. But we have to understand that Jesus, especially in the time of Rabbi, he could never touch anything dead. So even though you're praying for God to touch something dead, he does not touch anything dead. It is of no consequence to ask you, him even in prayer to touch your situation. He never touches anything dead. Why? Because he is holy. And you see, death does not represent holiness. You remember, you remember, you remember when Lazarus was being brought from the grave. When Lazarus was being brought from the grave, Jesus never laid hands on Lazarus. He just called him from afar and said, come forth. You see, he knew he could not touch him because he would have devoured his purity. He knew he could not touch anything unclean. So it's amazing what Jesus can do even though he can't do it the way we think he ought to do it. That's why his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. Jesus said, I can't, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. He said, you see, I, the enemy has to, 
has confused us, and he's also confused because he thinks that for God to touch something, that we have to be standing there in front of what we're asking God to do to touch. But you have to understand, just like he did with Lazarus, the enemy don't know that we have the power to send the word. We have the power to just speak it here and send it over there. What are you saying, Brother Pullen? What I'm saying, uh, the reason why I give God glory is because while I'm in here, God is somewhere else touching the situation. God is somewhere else delivering folks. He is somewhere else touching that person, touching that daughter, touching that saying he ain't got to say nothing to me. But some Sometimes God can touch the person behind the desk. See, we think if God ain't saying nothing to us, he's not moving. If Jesus ain't saying nothing to us, he's not moving. But he's moving on our behalf. He never touched Lazarus. You remember the story. You remember the story. You remember the story when he's walking through a small town called Nain. He gets to Nain. There is a casket on the way to the cemetery. And here again, he does something miraculous because he knows the little boy is in the box dead, but he knows he cannot touch the little boy. He knows he cannot defile his purity by touching the little boy. So what does he do? He touches the box that's holding the boy. See, in other words, you got to understand that Jesus has the power to touch things. So I asked Jesus, I began to ask him and deal with this, Lord. How, what is it that you're trying to say? What is it that you're trying to say in this sentence, in this season? Because regardless, as long as I'm in you and you in me, I know you have the power to do something. God said this. He said this to me. He began to deal with is I begin to question him on how he cannot, how can he touch an unclean thing? And he said these words. He said, look, look, I'm the only one that can touch your situation without touching your situation. Now, some of y'all got to receive that. Some of y'all got to receive that. Some of y'all got to receive that. God began to speak to me. God began to tell me that. I began to ask him about this. And Pastor, I don't know. I don't know. You heard it all. Bishop, you heard it all too. But God began to tell me that. And it began to resonate with me. He said, I'm the only one that can touch your situation without touching your situation. It don't matter how dead it is. I'm God. I can touch anything. Do you not know? And then he began to deal with me on who he is. He said, don't you know that I'm God? I speak and men live. I speak and men lay down. My foolishness is wiser than men. He's too wise to make a mistake. He's too just to bring any to do anything wrong. The God that we serve, he moves in mysterious ways. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will move in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. What did he say? He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. What else did he say? He said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Can I tell you something else? What else did he say? He said, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you one more? He said, I am. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. He also said, when he got to Psalms, a thousand shall fall at the right side, and ten thousand shall fall at the right hand, but it shall not come unto me. Look at this right here. God said, we are the Father. He is the Father. We are the clay. We are the potter. God said, tonight, I'm going to give you a spiritual awakening. He said, tonight, I'm going to give you a spiritual awakening. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take you and sit you back on the potter. I'm going to sit you back on the vessel. And then I'm going to begin to spin you. I'm going to spin you around. And when I spin you around, you're going to find some things that's going to fall off of you. You're going to find some things. That's gonna fall off for you. You're gonna find out the dead issue is gonna fall in the spinning. The dead weight is gonna fall 
ends up spinning the dead disciples, the lion, the backbiting, the hatred, the jealousy is going to fall in the, in the spinning because God will spin you around. Can you do me a favor? Can you fly with me? I need somebody in this house to fly with me. Hit the crash symbol. Do me a favor. Hit the crash symbol and let somebody know that God will work it out. God will turn it around. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Why? Because we are more, more than conquerors. What God going to do, he's going to put you on the wheel and he's going to spin you. And he's going to spin you and give you awakening. You're going to live better. Awakening. You're going to talk better. Awakening. You're going to reach a word. Awakening. You're going to understand. Be nice to nasty people. Awakening. You're going to see light. You're going to see your life. You're going to see yourself looking better. You're going to see yourself doing better. You're going to see yourself talking better. You're going to see yourself walking better. They ain't going to know how you got a new walk. They ain't going to know how you got a new talk. But God is going to deliver. God said tonight, he said tonight is your night. He's going to make you more than conquerors. You're going to walk out of here knowing you're more than conquerors over your dead issue. You're more than conquerors over your dead situations. How do you know that you're more than conquerors? Because a conqueror has the weapons. A conqueror has the swords. A conqueror has the shields. A conqueror has the helmets. So a conqueror is a Supposed to win, but when you out here, you ain't got none of that. You just got the word of God that makes you more than a conqueror because you're winning and you got less. You're winning and you ain't got all of that, but you're winning. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Say, Lord, spin me right. Spin me right. Spin me right. Spin me right. Spin that mess off. Spin that doubt off. Spin that craziness off. God will. God will turn it around. God will turn you around. So got somebody. I say he will, he will, he will, he will, he will. God said every person in here, if you're dealing with a dead issue, if you're dealing with a dead issue, if you got a dead situation, whether it's within yourself, whether it's within your family, whether it's within your friends, whether it's within your church, whether it's within your ministry, God said, run to the altar right now. Just run up here right now and begin to speak to me right now. Don't wait for nobody else. You know what you're dealing with. You know what you're dealing with. God said, I'm here. I'm getting ready to deliver. 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 I'm getting ready. He's 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 getting ready. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever's on your mind, Ask God to come take the weight off. Lord, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of dealing with it. I want to be free. I don't want this mess on me. I don't want to keep thinking about it. I don't want it to keep bothering me. I don't want it to keep following me. Lord, I need to be free. Lord, I need to be free. Lord, I need to be free. Lift it up right now. I need an awakening, Lord. I need an awakening, Lord. I need an awakening, Lord. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night to be free. Tonight is your night to be free. Right where you are, close your eyes and begin to speak to your daddy. Right where you are, close your eyes and begin to say, Lord, take this weight. Lord, take this heaviness. It could be on my children, but take it, God. My children is dealing with something, but take it, God. 
God give us the power to stand in the gap. God give us the authority to stand in the gap for somebody else. He give you the authority to stand in the gap for your ministry. Stand in the gap for your church. Stand in the gap for your family. Stand in the gap for your finances. Stand in the gap for your spirit. Come on, come on. Come on, lift, Lord, lift, Lord. Lift, Lord, lift, Lord. Lift, Lord, lift, Lord. Lift, Lord, lift it right now. Lift it right now. I take the weight off of me and I place it in your hands. Little as much when it's placed in the hands of the Lord. I place it in your hands right now. I place it in your hands right now. Come on, Zion, this your season. Come on, Zion, this your time. Lift that load right now. God's getting ready to take us somewhere. He's getting ready to take you somewhere. And God said, where you going, you can't go with that heaviness on you. You can't go with that weight on you. You can't go with all of that. God said, I got to lift it off of you right now. I got to lift it off of you right now. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him.